guys, it's Joy, and if you saw the title of today's video, today I want to talk about something that actually I don't think I've ever spoken about this person too much, Jeffree Star. And it's no disrespect, but he does beauty community stuff, and I'm just not in the beauty community. As you can tell by this mug, what, I think I have some pimplish stuff going on here. I don't even care. <laughs> I think I just realized that I was so light-skinned when I was younger um, that everything that I tried makeup-wise would come up on me as orange, and I honestly just, I didn't have the time. <laughs> when I was younger and I was in school, like, I was a super active type A personality. I would spend 16 or 18 hour days in school. I would get there early, work on projects, leave super late, be doing things with choir and broadcasting and all these different things, so I was really active. I just didn't have time to mess with it. And anytime I tried, everything just looked crazy orange, so I gave up. And I think I've kind of been in that mindset. But uh, so it's just, no disrespect, it just doesn't interest me at all. But let me tell you guys what this video is and why I'm doing this video. As you guys know, I've been doing a series on cancel culture and how I look at it and how I think it's really harmful. Um, when done incorrectly. If you haven't seen it, go check out my video. I have one about cancel culture. I'll put it up here. Links in the description. And I've also had a couple videos about Shane Dawson. And I will ask everybody, please keep an open mind for this video. It's probably, if you see the title, it's probably not going to go where you think it's going to go. So when you watch my content, just keep an open mind. We don't have to agree and that's totally okay. But anytime I say anything in defense of Shane Dawson at this point, a lot of people get mad. Um, so I just ask you to keep, I just ask respectfully, try to keep an open mind to this and just hear if maybe some of my points of view resonate with you guys. So before I begin, guys, I want to give a quick disclaimer. This video is not to attack or offend or be mean to anyone, okay? I really, really hope that this video is received in the way that I'm wanting it to. This is very, very well intended. I'm not trying to justify. I am not trying to excuse any behaviors from any of the people that I'm talking about. I just want to give an in-depth analysis of what I see, the problems I see, and certain issues I see that maybe you might not hear other places or in as much popular opinion. And I'm sure you might hear it other places. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying it's stuff that I don't ever hear when I look at popular creators talking about things. Um, also, if you like videos like this, I have a series about, about Eugenia Cooney right now and several other people, but Eugenia Cooney is one. And some of the eating issues and some of the concerns, go check that out. I have videos on uh, Shane Dawson, so go check those out. Trisha Paytas, Onision. Onision is a docu docu-series coming out on regular TV. It's going to get wild. So make sure and go check those things out if you're interested. Leave me a like, subscribe, and then hit notifications if you like this kind of content. I, I kind of want to go into this dichotomy between why are we so big to cancel Shane Dawson, who, yes, has had a lot of questionable things in the past that he's changed from. Why are we so quick to cancel Shane Dawson, but yet with Jeffree Star, Jeffree, no matter what he does, continues to do, and the ways he doesn't change, continues to get a pass. And why are more people way more focused on the downfall of Shane, somebody who's trying to be better and change, than Jeffree? That's what I want to go into today because the hypocrisy is driving me nuts. Now, let me start off by saying I do not condone any R word type of activity or negativity. When I say R word, it means, and by the way, in these videos, and I hate this, I've seen some people get irritated in the comments and I'm with you. I have to speak very roundabout on YouTube. So some things you're just going to have to infer. And believe me, I love cursing more than anybody else on the planet. I love creative cursing, but I can't. And I have to just really word things roundabout. It would be a person who dislikes a certain minority group. Please infer. Um, I, uh, you know, like, so, so yeah, that, that, that's the best way I will describe it at this point. I'm not saying that's the most accurate definition, but just trying to work around YouTube. So I have been seeing more and more people come and come and come and come and make things up and make things up to come for Shane. And look, I get it. Shane was officially canceled this year. And I understand why people are upset with it. I understand why people are looking at his past content and they are upset. I'm not saying I don't. I'm saying there's much more and much deeper levels to this conversation about 
this situation. I think there's much more that we need to look at. Do people really care that much that Shane had horrible humor? Or is this like, are people really so focused on wanting social justice and change? Or is it that we have become just a complete place of, of bullies? Is YouTube and social media, have we just become attention seeking bullies masking as right fighters? Now, by the way, I know a lot of people are pushing forward and want social change. I'm not saying that's not happening, but I am saying there's another side to this. The attention seeking bullying side that we aren't looking at, but I feel like literally every couple months is getting worse and worse and more ramped up, more ramped up, and in my opinion, even promoted on social media. So let's go a little bit into Shane Dawson's background. Shane is one of the top popular YouTubers on the planet, as you guys know. Millions of subscribers, millions, maybe even into the billions of views, and he has done some of those, the most watched docuseries on the planet. I was actually at a teeny feature in one of them, which I was always so grateful for. I never expected that. Just was, you know, when people were really mad at him about the Jake Paul series and I was on YouTube at the time, um, you know, I basically said it's his content. He can do whatever he wants with it. And uh, he happened to put that criticism. That I don't know if that would be called criticism, but it was a, you know, a critique and it was, you know, positive in his favor. Not because I'm, by the way, I'm not a super huge Shane Dawson fan, guys. I don't really, like, I only really un like became more of a fan of his with the Jake Paul series. That was the first time I sat down and watched a whole Shane Dawson video all the way through. That being said, um, he was super nice to me. He left me a couple of comments. He put me in one of his videos in one of the top docuseries on the planet. And I'm very grateful for that. But I don't want to be biased. And what I mean by that is I dove into his past content recently. Now, what's been making the rounds is that Shane Dawson in 2013, 2014, he directed and starred in a movie called Not Cool. Don't know if you guys have seen this or heard of this. I haven't sat down and watched the movie yet. I've heard across the board it's horrible. And you know what? Probably is. It probably is. However, what people are really going after is apparently there's leaked footage from Shane uh, during this docuseries where he looks horrible. And now people are going, well, he says he's an empath. Maybe he's really a psychopath and he's masking it. And I am now, now I don't know, sometimes I, I put these videos out at different times. So I'm in the process at the moment of, of watching this docu-series. Because the thing was, when he was doing this film, they were also filming a reality show. It was a competition between him and a girl named Anna. And they were both making a similar, like basically same script, even though they'd rewritten and did different things. And they were both making a different movie. And Shane ended up winning and his movie ended up coming out. Now, it bombed. Like it took like $800,000 to make and I think it made like 30,000. So it wasn't good. But people are now saying there's all this leaked footage coming out. Well, first of all, it's not leaked footage. It's just people went back and watched. And what people are doing is they're going back to his old days when he did super controversial, super offensive content. And they're looking for sound bites. Cause I'm on episode seven. I'm looking at this going, I feel like the majority of what people are putting out there is being completely misrepresented. But then again, it's just bullying for, it's, it's getting attention and nickels, like views and a little bit of money off of anything you can. And I feel like in that way on social media, we become bullies. So I'm diving into this. Let me know if you guys are interested because I really want to do a video about this leaked footage. I'm like, it's not even leaked. It's all out there. What I feel like people are doing is that in the commentary communities, there's a lot of topics that are drying up. So they're just going back and they know if you say something about Shane, you're probably going to get some attention. And the wilder and the more crazy, the more attention, the more money you're going to get. And they're just going to spin and twist everything to a narrative that he's this horrible person. Now his content back in the day, super R word, super misogynistic, super. And this is the thing though. I grew up in his era and this is something I've talked about. In that era, it was a, and I'm so, by the way, I'm really irritated about this because I'm about to say this phrase and I feel like I already know what people are going to say. It was a very different time. And I've also, I've looked at several videos of people who didn't like this and they gave points of view. And some of the younger ones, no disrespect when I say younger, I'm just saying we're a different generation. They're like, I'm tired of hearing that it was just a different time. Oh, it was like 20 years ago. It's not that big a deal. It wasn't that big a time shit. 
No, 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 it was. Because I think what the young ones don't understand is that social media over the last 10 to 15 years has completely changed the landscape of our world and how we interact socially. But since most of them have had access to this technology for most of their conscious lives, they don't understand. My generation saw the shift. In fact, I saw a video. Let me know if you would like me to break this down because I've been thinking about this. So me and roommate were bored the other night and we were trying to find something to watch when we're on Disney. And he's like, you wanna watch Heavyweights? I'm like, I remember that movie when I was little. Do you guys know what Heavyweights is? Heavyweights, this came out in the mid 90s. This is a movie about kids who go to fat camp, constantly making fun of them being fat and starving them doing A word things, things that are really bad for their physical, mental, emotional health and pushing eating issues and making all kinds of eating issue jokes. Please infer, when I say eating issues, I'm talking about people who don't eat enough or people who might go and do something about it. It's a crazy movie. And I'm looking at this going, people can watch this right now on Disney. They could just go click and watch this right now and nobody cares. If that movie were made today, those people would be sued and be put in prison. Oh my goodness. And I was laughing going and people act like it wasn't such a different time. No, it was, it was. I've said this before, this was a time when the ED culture, eating issue culture was being pushed heavily on people, especially women all the time. It was just expected if you're not a woman, don't eat, don't eat in public, do everything you can to appear submissive and teeny. By the way, if you are small, more power you to, or more, ah, I can't stop if you are small, more power to you. If you are bigger or curvier, more power to you. Do whatever feels right for you. If you are struggling with health issues and it makes you small or big, even more love to you. So I'm not being judgmental, but I'm saying it was a very, very different time. And here's the other thing. Does that mean, because Shane back then, I think he had like 10 million subscribers is what I remember seeing when he was doing this documentary. Does that mean there were 10 million people who liked his content, who were just all a bunch of R words? Just 10 million of them who flocked to it? Well, no, I have a different take on it. And I wanna give you a little bit of a take and then I'm gonna talk about Jeffree Star. Everybody was doing offensive, edgy content back then. Back then it was considered edgy. Now, why would, did people not consider that the R word? Why was it people really didn't run around and say, oh, that's so R word and people were drawn to that? It was because we lived in a really rough and tumble time where we had to grow up quickly, then for ourselves and guess what? Our parents, the majority of them, if they weren't R words, had a lot of R word tendencies. And many of us, like me, were stuck in the middle of the Midwest in, in places that leaned more towards R wordism, please infer, and we hated it. And you know the way we dealt with it? You know the way we dealt with it was joking, was extreme humor. That's how we coped. Because many times our parents weren't gonna get us therapy, especially for their bad actions or what was going on. We coped with these things by joking. How did we cope with the fact that women constantly had eating issue culture pushed on them? We joked about it. We joked about the things we hated because we didn't have access to be able to get what we needed to fix it. And guess what? Social media wasn't a thing. Social media has made social change across the board. And we didn't have any power to do that. So we had to cope in the ways that we could. And that's why people gravitated towards and flocked to edgy humor. It's why people still do, if we're being honest. In my opinion, seeing Shane and watching his content, that was the intent he came from. He since has realized that his content could have been offensive and alienating and all of these things he didn't intend for. He's apologized, he's taken it down, and over the last several years he's worked to be a better, more socially conscious human being. My point is, it's about intent. And I feel like we don't allow intent for that to be anymore. We don't allow offensive joking, even if this is the way somebody can cope. Yet we haven't built a society yet where people can get the help they need when they need it so they don't have to go to offensive joking. So now we're saying, we're not gonna give you what you need to cope with you, all the bad things you're going through. Oh, and by the way, with that being said, any coping skills you're gonna try to use to deal with it, we're going to demonize you for. Even a lot of these P word jokes where people might not be very nice to kids, please infer that Shane did. Shane was a victim of that type of behavior when he was younger. These are coping mechanisms. And you guys could think, yeah, but he got all this money and then he chose to keep doing it. Guys, it can take a long time for people to figure out. And it's only been over the last 
few years of social media being around that it's become more of a major topic and discussion for people to realize how bad it is. Because society was more okay and acceptable of things back then, even as of 20 years ago, even as of 15 years ago. I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Social media has changed the landscape. Now, let's talk about Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star has done many things and very few apologies. Very few. And he continues many of these behaviors consistently. Jeffree Star actually got some of his start touring with somebody who was a P word and influencing young people. And yet we've allowed him to grow into this mega platform that he has. Now, to be fair, there have been calls to cancel Jeffrey. People are not happy with Jeffrey. But very little ever really happens to Jeffrey. People just let him go on his way. You don't see people kind of consistently making as many videos about Jeffrey and his behavior versus Shane. With Shane, it's just an all out war. It's a bloodbath of let's tear this human being down. But why? If Shane has apologized and shows that he's trying to make change and show he didn't actually intend to harm anybody, yet we have Jeffrey who will do anything for attention and just does not care and will not apologize and will get in your face and say blank you if you say anything. Why is it more acceptable in our society to allow Jeffrey to be as he is and to tear down Shane? We could say, well, Shane has more influence. I don't think so. Have you seen Jeffrey's platform? And Jeffrey gets that makeup out there, which Shane had done recently, but until then, Shane didn't have. So we could really argue both sides of the spectrum when it comes to influence. Let me tell you what I think. Number one, from a business and marketing perspective, Shane has really tried to rebrand himself. Yes, he did the edgy content and all of that, but he's tried to really rebrand himself and put out the message, I'm trying to be a decent person doing good in the world. He is constantly trying to show us that. And he's constantly doing things, not just saying it, but doing it. Trying to be a better person, trying to show the better sides of people. And sometimes, like with Eugenia Cooney, it can backfire. Or Katie Morton. We're not perfect, and sometimes things can happen to other people like Shane too. And we have Jeffrey that just keeps doing what he wants and doesn't care. In fact, it almost seems like he revels in some of the controversies because he knows it's going to create more attention. So Jeffrey has a brand where he knows this. He says, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to be. And I don't care what you think. That's his brand. His brand is still more on the controversial, edgy side. Shane has tried to change. And when you bring these two people together, because I think Shane could have kept going had he not tried to work with Jeffrey. And by the way, no disrespect to Jeffrey or Shane in that. They are grown men that can do whatever they want to do. If they want to work with each other, go for it. If Shane wants to be friends with him, that's fine. I don't care, right? That's their business. Um, Shane, I think, tried to show a different side of Jeffree Star than what we typically see. The problem is, and this was the problem with the Eugenia Cooney documentary, Eugenia Cooney doesn't seem like she's trying to change. And it's not genuine. Not to say she's not a good person. I like her. I think she's stuck in a really bad situation. I have a series on her. Go check that out where I'm detailing what's happening with her. But with Jeffrey, Jeffrey I don't think really is wanting to or really is necessarily trying to change in the way Shane is. Jeffrey still revels in the negative attention. Shane is sensitive. Shane doesn't want the negative attention. Where Jeffrey doesn't care. So... When you put these two together, you have this dichotomy of like Shane, who represents the angel, and you have Jeffrey, who represents the devil. If you are, and this is my opinion, with Jeffrey, if you already know that he's a piece of crap, he doesn't care to change, no matter what you say, he's just going to revel in it and turn it into something that makes it beneficial to him, then it's not as much fun to go after him. Think about how bullies operate, or even trolls on the internet. The more attention you give them when you give them attention any type of morsel of attention, they're going to take it and run 10 times further with it as much as possible. So people know what the more attention you give Jeffrey, in many ways, the more it backfires on you and you don't get the attention you want. But with Shane, you can get a lot of attention by saying, look, I'm exposing how awful and evil he is because he says he's not evil, but we have to show he's evil. Well, if you're already evil, there's nothing to show. Less attention. So this is my problem with society. I don't think most of the people who are on social media platforms with decent followings, I think, well, let me, let me back that up. I don't want to say most. I think a lot of them, more than enough, don't care as much about the social issues. I'm sure they care some. 
They really care more about getting attention, being able to rage at somebody, being able to tear somebody down. And in that case, I feel like this social justice vigilantism that's come about that has made some great changes is also destroying society because it's made everybody feel justified to be a bully. What is the point of having social justice change if there is no change? What's the point of social justice if you don't want change? Because here's the thing, you have a human being who's got a huge platform, who is desperately trying to become a better person and all you're doing is pulling things up from his past and talk and trying to compare him six, seven years ago to who he is today when he's tried to actively change and he is actively changing. So do you really care about making the world a better place or are you just attention seeking? And that's my thoughts lately because I've been going, why is it Jeffree Star gets away with it? Why is it some people get a pass? And I went through this my first round on YouTube, my first go about, I think to people I looked at this really kind, nice, caring person who is empathetic and really trying to do well, and I was. Doesn't mean those people make mistakes, but it means when you have that type of brand that your mistakes are even more amplified because people know that's fresh meat they can get more attention and more nickels off of. Tearing that person down and being the one to expose them gets you more attention than trying to fight the person who knows that they're a piece of crap and just doesn't care. And so in that way, this is why I think this social justice stuff is going to end up hurting society. Because if we are going to demonize the people who try to become better and try to change, then nothing changes. So what happens? It's just social justice with no change, which ends up being outrage and raging and anger that goes nowhere, but just boils and festers until at some point you have the dichotomy of two sides fighting. And my worry is, as I've said, we're going to end up creating a counterculture to the social justice stuff. Something that YouTube and the social media platforms can't squash, it's going to be really bad. Really bad. Real R words. I know real R words exist. I know they do, but I mean in mass, just because people are tired of how things are going and how unfair it can be because people basically demand perfection from people. And there's no room to make mistakes or take accountability or to seek forgiveness. And I just have a really bad sinking feeling about it. But I wanted to go ahead and point that out. I may be doing a Jeffree Star video coming out this week. Uh, you know, again, the beauty community doesn't interest me, but there was one thing I found kind of interesting. So let me know if you guys would be interested to hear some of my takes on him as well. Let me know what you think about this video. And I'm not condoning or standing by some of the stuff that Shane said or did. Please understand that. But I am understanding that that type of behavior, that type of humor, was around than it was popular because we lived in a really rough time where we had to cope with all the crap we saw going on. And the way we coped, one of the things we did was we just did extreme outrageous humor. The, probably the worse you had it growing up, the worse your humor is, the darker it is. Why is that? Because we're trying to find the light in something very, very dark. Another thing that bothers me that I want to get into before I end this video. So many of these young people scream, we need to take their social justice issues seriously, but then laugh and mock my generation when we say it was a different time and act like we're full of crap and what we say shouldn't deserve compassion to. I'm really tired of selective empathy from people. We need to allow people to be people, grow, learn, make mistakes. And I really, really hope that our society can change from one of just bullying and tearing somebody down to one of wanting to see the best in people within reason and one that promotes forgiveness and positive change. It doesn't mean we don't see the negative things about somebody or the downfalls or the pitfalls or where the danger can be. Obviously, we need to go through that and see that. My point is to say, I just hope that at some point we can get to the point where we allow people to be people again without becoming the bullies ourselves. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and like it. Also, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit notifications so you can know when I upload. Leave a comment. I want to hear everything y'all think. Tommy, do you think I'm onto something? Am I completely off in this sound off? And then if you think somebody would like this video, share it with them. Share it where you think you could, and uh, I would definitely appreciate that. I also want to make sure and say I really hope this video is, I hope this is received well. My intention is not to offend. My intention isn't to excuse. My intention is not to put down. My intention is just to show some issues I see in society and where I think things are unfair or hypocritical. I also think Shane 
is a good person who's really trying? And why would you want to kick somebody who's trying? Why would you want to beat somebody up who's an ally who's trying to be on your side to make positivity in the world? That's what I think. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Take care until the next video. I'm wishing everybody lots of love and blessings, and I'm giving y'all hugs and kisses. Bye, guys.